My name is Vitold Hennish. I'm an associate professor here in the management department at the Wharton School. Uh, I've been focusing for the last 12 years on my research, my consulting, my teaching on the management of political and social relationships by multinational firms. Um, I think there are two main sources of this capability. One is the sort of the conditions at origin. If a firm uh, grew, was born in a situation in which this type of relationship was really critical, I mean, in my context, looking at political and social relationships, say a firm in a regulated industry, uh, electricity generation or oil and gas, where politics are there from day one, uh, they have to develop the capability. They have to develop it to survive the first couple months, the first couple years. And the second is a firm that got burned, a firm that found that if it uh, was blindsided, it it uh, lost sight of its competitive, or it lost competitive advantage, uh, and it lost billions of dollars uh, because it wasn't able to meet that challenge. And then it learns very quickly afterwards, or we don't hear about it anymore. I thought one great example that I uh, encountered last summer uh, was in Angola, actually, in Luanda. I was looking at uh, oil companies there, and uh, for a long time oil companies had been criticized because they weren't uh, d drawing enough on local content in their uh, supplies in Africa. They were bringing everything in from South Africa, from China, uh, from the United States, and they weren't leaving enough money in the, uh, in the local country to generate any kind of support. And what they found was most of the local companies weren't of the sufficient size uh, to meet their contracting terms, and they couldn't deal with the hundreds of pages of paperwork. And through discussions with local NGOs, with local uh, potential suppliers, uh, they really heard about this process and tried to adapt to respond to it. And so they created, uh, in conjunction with an NGO, a streamlined application process that would work for all the oil companies in Angola, and also a training, night training program to help the companies learn how to manage the paperwork uh, to become certified and to be able to apply to be suppliers. And so it was a collaboration between the oil companies, the NGOs, the potential suppliers, the Angolan government, and the United Nations that created a new way of applying to be a contractor and a new way to leave money in Angola and in, in Luanda. It's a combination of hard and soft skills. Uh, there's an incredible amount of new business intelligence software that's allowing us to crunch more information, uh, more data from more sources, combine information from the web, from blogs, from the media to understand who's out there and what they want, what they're upset about, or what they demand from us. Uh, but then we have to combine it with an understanding that ultimately there are people at the end of these uh, connections and we need to empower and motivate them and set recognition that all the data in the world, all the analytics in the world, absent execution and implementation don't deliver value. And I think we're making progress on both ends of that continuum.